Oh, so while Nisha's getting a drink, Brad, um, uh, what's your favourite gorilla moment in media? I, I kind of like Peter Jackson's King Kong when it slides around on the ice. Yeah, it's, it's really just, nice he's, he's, just having, he's having a lot of fun. Yeah. I also love, like, you know, the noise. That, like, you know, that ASMR gorilla slide tech. So did you ever see that video of that like, gorilla that just slides up to a window and then someone edit like the JoJo music onto it and it's like, <gasps> you talk, heard you talking shit. So why do gorillas have the ability I to slide? <laughs> just the one that slides. I'm the slide slide. <laughs> <laughs> like the edit it someone did. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the little green gorilla? I don't know where that is, it'll be in a box somewhere. But yeah, Nisha, you want to open your beer? Yeah. Oh, so today we're talking about gorillas. Not the band, no, because we will get copyright <laughs> struck. Um, what do I want to open mine with? Um, shit. You're going to pour one out for Harambe. Oh, he's, already, he's been dead for a while now. So, Aww. I know. <laughs> That's so sad, <laughs> isn't it? You know what? I'll, op I'll open my beer with my copy of Wu-Tang Taste the Pain on for the PS2. That's going to break. It's not. It's fine. Don't worry. Nope. Oh, <laughs> he, he broke, he, no, he broke because I squeezed it. Knocks the beer. Um, he's so strong. He's got that gorilla strength going on. The power of the gorilla. Ah, oh, fuck it. Just open it with this. There we go. Ah, so the DC hero, the Flash, has a rather, shall I say, eclectic rogues gallery, which includes a man who throws boomerangs, and most pertinent to today's video, to today's video, I should say, a gorilla. A gorilla that, according to DC canon, is one of the greatest threats the heroes of that universe face. In part, due to his vast sonic abilities and his combat spoon. Also, so, his thirst for brains. Delicious, delicious <laughs> brains. So we're talking about Grodd, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Gorilla Grodd! Yay! <laughs> well, here's the thing, Nisha. You might not know about Gorilla Grodd, but what do you know about Gorilla? Because... Um. <laughs> Because Gorilla Grodd is one of my favourite like DC characters because he's just Gorilla. It's such a simple concept. It's like, well, the Flash can run super fast. What should we make him fight? Well, you know, Mirror Master. Okay, makes sense. Mirrors. Who else? A guy with a boomerang. Fucking flawless idea. You're on a winner. Who next? Guy with a gun that shoots cold beams. Perfect. But we need like, you know, the trifecta. Gorilla. Perf oh, well, he makes so much sense. And that's what I love about the Flash. Like, all these villains make no fucking sense. So, like, there's a guy who hides in mirrors, the guy with a gun that shoots cold. There's a, a gorilla with psychic powers. It's like, what? That stunt cost me a fortune. Boomer, must you always plead poverty? I've got my overhead. You just pull another mirror out of your blinking ass. They just, like, spin a wheel. <laughs> Randomised it. Oh yeah, okay. for gorilla, it's like a wrong gorilla. We'll go for that. Well, it's because nothing can really realistically pause a threat to a guy with super speed. Like it, it is right, an overpowered you, power. Are you forgetting that this gorilla has a spoon? What is this spoon? Well, we'll talk about that in a bit. But for anyone who doesn't know, like Nisha about Gorilla Grodd, he is, as his name suggests, a big gorilla. A oh, Grodd. <laughs> no, called Grodd, who hails from a, like, a city in the DC universe called, I shit you not, Gorilla City which is filled with hyper-intelligent, albeit very uncreative, gorillas. And the city is well known for its um, uh, contributions to science, culture, and gorilla-themed architecture. Because, <laughs> like, all of their, like, statues are just big gorillas wearing hats. It's like, that's where I want to live. Gorilla City? A hidden city of super-intelligent talking gorillas with technology far beyond anything humans have created. No, really. Comments. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but you know one of the things I love about like the DC universe is that this is an actual, like, you know, city that you can go visit. And they have like a university you can study a gorilla you. That you can go there and study. They don't often accept people that the gorillas there don't trust humans, but you can go. So you have some comics where people just visit Gorilla City to be a tourist and it's just full of gorillas. My mind's just gone, it's a completely different direction, but it's just reminded me of something I watched years ago. And I think it only had one season, because it didn't do very well. But I think I said it had one gorilla in it. It, <laughs> it had, I know it had one with Miller in, I think. It was Dinotopia. I don't know if you ever saw that. But it had like a talking dinosaur in it. Wow, I just square a babe like that. God. Hmm? What? 
It was like uh, what I imagined Gorilla City to be like. Now, my eyes dinosaurs. are getting big because Wentworth Miller is in The Flash as Captain Wait, Cold. What? Yeah, <laughs> and The Flash has Gorilla Grodd, and they have that amazing episode where Gorilla Grodd goes back through time to beat up Barack Obama. Do you not remember that? I, I've watched The Flash up to about season four or five. Do you not remember the bit where no. Gorilla Grodd tries to kill Barack Obama? No. You don't remember that bit? Time to make America Grodd again. And they have that great screenshot of Barack Obama, you're in trouble, and a gorilla bursts through the wall. You like me to watch it just for that moment. <laughs> you need to watch it for the musical episodes. Because like Grant Gustin was on Glee first, wasn't he? Yeah. And then so was uh, Melissa Benoist, is it? She was on Glee, so they have musical episodes of The Flash where Grant Gustin is just singing. He's like, this, this is what we need from this universe. I believe the plot of that episode is that some guy with the power to take other people's powers puts them into a magical coma where they end up in a musical world where they're gangsters. I love this, it. This is a superhero show. I love it. I don't, I don't watch much DC and mm -hmm. more like it doesn't like captivate me as much as Marvel does so I'm trying to watch more DC hey, now you know it's a gorilla <laughs> no, Nisha will remember though that video I showed you the flash is insufferably inconsistent oh, if anybody's not seen that mm -hmm. it is an amazing video series I think he's only done three seasons where he breaks down how fucking stupid the logic of the flash show is yeah. once you realise how much Barry can actually do and how much he actually does yeah because something we've talked about like, quite often in the past is the idea of secondary superpowers. So like, if the Flash can run at 600 miles an hour, he must have the ability to react at the same speed. Like, he must have reaction speeds that allow him to do that. So when you see like, a mugger punch him, that is ridiculous. How can you punch a man who can like, run around and turn a corner while running at like, you know, Mach 3? You know, they establish in the Flash series that he can react to being shot by a gun to dodge it. Yeah, but then he gets punched yeah, by can, a gorilla. Yeah, he can knock people out um, when going at super speed, but he never does it. Mm -hmm. He always stops to talk. And there's a, in the series, you do a shot every time he stops to talk. And by the end of it, you're drunk. But I, I love that show more than anything just for the uh, the, um, uh, the chemistry between him and Melissa Benoist, Supergirl. Because they have this amazing moment where they did their version of Flashpoint, where they combine the two universes. And the, like, when they establish that Supergirl and the Flash in the same universe, some guy comes up and he's like, hey, are you doing another team up? And like, what? You know that we live in the same, yeah, of course. You're always doing, can you sign my poster? And it's like very obviously like behind the scenes, like photos of the two actors in their costumes, giving like the biggest, goofiest thumbs up. Oh, sure. Um... Wait, you know both of us? And it's normal to see us together and just that alone so I'm like this is what this needs to be i like actors who are clearly having fun because it's just those two just go in like super awkward nervous smiles for this promo shot that they're just saying yeah, as much as i enjoy that video where he breaks apart the show like it is just because it's so goofy it's so and, like fun. every time went with miller shows up and then eventually he shows up with dominic purcell and it's like yeah. yes it's more as well you can tell everyone in it it's just like They've got that bottle of sriracha and they're pouring it on the scenery and they're just like, oh, just gnawing on that scenery. They love it. Home free, buddy. It's good to be the king. Get away. Chase? Want a chase? I can arrange a chase. Even get us tossed in Iron Heights and we can plan an escape just like old times. How does that sound? Boring. Oh, and Nisha just like, I don't. Study like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, in which case, Nisha, what's like, you know, you watch The Boys a lot, right, yeah? I'm re-watching it, and yeah. I went to a convention last weekend. Yes, yeah, you did. You, you met Jack Quaid, yes. I did, as well as Tom McPhone, Colby Minifee, and Nathan Mitchell. You did indeed. Also, so got... Black Noir in real life. <laughs> I think we've not seen his face yet, have we, in the, in the show? He does reveal it once, doesn't he? You see it in one scene in a flashback scene. Yes, you do, of course, yes. Yeah. But, yeah. But I, I know thinking... the comments will say it's different to the comics, it's mm. fine, shut yeah. up. A TV show, it's a different medium, but yeah, you've been watching that. Is there any like moments in that that you find like quite hilarious? Obviously, it's a superhero show deconstructing other superhero shows. Uh... <laughs> Does it bother you that there's no gorillas in it? Uh... Well, well, the point I was going to make is the superhero show deconstructing other superhero shows that's making fun of them has what might be the greatest example of like Aquaman's powers. Because like Aquaman has been like the running joke in like comics for like 50 straight years. And The Deep, who is like a very obvious satire of that character, who is like consistently made fun of, like consistently shat on from a great height by everyone, 
might have the coolest Aquaman quote unquote moment I've ever seen, where it's just like, hey, what's that? Oh, it's a dolphin. That's not too bad. Then just infinite sharks turn up and it's like, holy shit, no, what are we doing? Uh, we just watched that scene where the whale scene. Yeah, the whale scene. Yeah, the whale scene so yeah. gross. There's also a scene at the end of uh, season three that I just couldn't not laugh at. And it's the scene where uh, Homelander sends the Deep to assassinate the politician. Oh, he just drowns him in yeah, the pool. Yeah, and he drowns him in the pool. Then at the end, the Deep pops up in the water looking all sad. It's like, <laughs> we knew it was him. Yeah. Oh, I well, the, the, his gills start talking as well. Obviously, oh, <laughs> like, oh, the actor. Pan Oswald. I love all deep facts with the deep. Oh, deep thoughts. <laughs> yeah, just deep coming up in his in his just. <laughs> I love how I like they're, they're so good at coming up with like the parody joke names for media, yeah. like with the deep and his autobiography. Deeper. <laughs> it's like every single time they bring up a joke, like joke media, and that the name of it is just so on point. Yeah, it's just like. like I think every line by Carl Urban is just brilliant. Yeah. Like A train to Africa. <laughs> and also like something I didn't notice like first time watching it is like um, Mother's Milk has that doll's house he's trying to complete. <laughs> he's like, if I don't get to like complete my doll's house, I'll be pissed. <laughs> Oh man, I just, the thing is though, uh, you said you met uh, Colby Minfia, yeah. who plays Ashley in the show. Oh, I, I, just, I just want to give props to her reactions of like just the soulless corporate. Um, uh, just like Shill, who's just like, she really tries to like tow that company line, but when she like starts reaming out A Train, was like, you worked like, no, fuck you, I've cleaned up so much of your shit. I have spent over a hundred hours in crisis management meetings, specifically figuring out how to cover up your bullshit, including all three of your straight up murders while you were out in the club with your crew or getting your toe sucked by Popclaw, who let's not forget, you also murdered. Yeah, that's right. I know about that. You know what? She's brilliant like, in person. She's so down to earth. She's like, mm -hmm. she's happy to be there meeting fans. And mm -hmm. like, she was at the last convention and people loved her so much. She got invited to this one that I went to. I can see she's that, yeah. She's so funny. She has so many funny stories and she's like so charismatic. Like she was like everyone's favorite. Yeah, I can, like, I'm not sure if she does, but I, I get the feeling she ad-libs a lot of her lines. I feel like her and like Jack Quaid and stuff because of their backgrounds, like they probably do ad lib a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. You can just see it of like, yeah, she's clearly loving that role. Yeah, she's, um, she, I know she plays, uh, she, she was saying like she plays a lot of like psychotic women. And she's, yeah. cause she is quite, um, what's I can see word? her playing like the ex girlfriend. Like she's kind of like, whoa, extreme, extravagant, like mm -hmm. quite out there. So she's like good at playing like, people who are in a crazy situation. So that's why it suits Ashley, because she's like obviously stressed and just like kind of all over the place, like chaos. She's chaotic. Chaos. Yeah. yeah. You want justice? Yeah. <laughs> I just love just though, she's always towing that company line. Like, <laughs> just when she sat there and like, you know, that bit where she's talking to Maeve, and it gets me because that's the thing. It's so ironic that show's produced by Amazon, who does that shit. <laughs> when they're talking like, look, hey, Maeve, like you're a strong, you're a strong um, uh, lesbian. So I want bisexual. Well, well, that's complicated. People yeah. don't like that. You're a, you're a lesbian. Cool, lesbian just easier to yeah. say. Apparently, yeah. People don't like bisexual. That's weird. And that's you know, we don't. That our target demographic doesn't like that. Okay, so here's the outfits I want you to wear. So well, actually, no, I prefer wearing dresses. Like, no, no, we can't have that. People prefer mm -hmm. um, same-sex couples where they conform to the traditional um, like gender stereotypes. And they're just like. And you can just see, like, she doesn't believe a word she's saying, but she has that corporate veneer of like dead behind the eyes. And I, it must be difficult to do because, like you said, she's like very like, nice in person. Oh, she's How does she get into character of being dead behind the eyes? How do you fake that? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ashley Barrett. Despite numerous headwinds, Vaught and our heroes have never been stronger. I just want to like mention like a moment where it just shows like how funny she is. Cause mm -hmm. we, um, for the second, well, the last day that we were at the convention, we mm -hmm. got um, like a bonus picture to yes. get another signature from all the cast that were there. And um, it's like of all, the pictures of the cast, yes. so four of them posing with like middle fingers up. And uh, Colby was the last one who signed ours and on Adam's version. Yeah. She started like um, graffitiing on it, like gave um, Nathan a massive penis and like <laughs> cut in his teeth and then made like Jack Wade's bar on Tova. And it's just like, she's just so like, like down to earth like that, just funny. She's like, yeah, yeah I'll do this. Well, that brings us back to The Flash because you know, like Mel Melissa Benowitz and Grant Gustin troll each other via their fans. Because like Melissa Benowitz, whenever she gets asked to sign stuff, 
Because she was like, oh, can you sign this Flash merch? She was like, yeah, Grant dies. <laughs> and she was like, the Flash sucks. And like, he'll do the same thing of like, Supergirl sucks on her merch. Because they have like, you know, their friends in real life. And I love that. But also, I want to like mention, I know it's like me rambling on, but the previous day, um, Adam got a picture of Colby just to, just for him. Yeah. You, get, you get one signature per person and yeah. you have the bonus one. But um, for Colby's signature, I told her, because like, Adam was behind me. I oh, said, right. Right on, on Adam's um, picture, I love Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> I hate Sheffield Wednesday. And she did. She was like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, yeah, he'll love it. He'll love and the thing it. is, he can't throw that away, because I've seen how it's like this <laughs> unique thing that he paid money for. <laughs> Wasn't this also the day that Sheffield United were playing at Wembley? Yeah, because was wearing, Adam was wearing his Sheffield United shirt. And I was like, yeah, just write, I love Sheffield Wednesday. And she thought, I love Sheffield Wednesday, you cunt. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, I love when that's to do that. <laughs> gorillas. Oh, yeah, gorillas, yeah. So, you know, speaking of Gorilla Grodd, like, what do you think his superpowers are? Well, I mean, I know, so I guess we'll pass the nation. Yeah, go on. He's, he's with a spoon. <laughs> yeah, he's a spoon. Well, yeah, just, just think, he's a gorilla. He's super intelligent. Super strength. Oh, well, he's, yeah. Yeah, intelligence. Yeah. That's it. I'm going just... not, not flying. <laughs> his superpowers are he is <laughs> his, super, his superpowers are he is gorilla but smart. That's it. Like he is gorilla, but he is smart. Does, so does he wear glasses? He does not wear glasses. No. He does that's, wear a helmet. That's Winston you're thinking of. Uh, he does wear a helmet which um, amplifies his um, latent psionic abilities, which apparently all gorillas have, but they just don't have the intelligence to use it. Do you know much about Winston from Overwatch? I know that he's nowhere near as good as Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> that, that's your personal in. <laughs> I do, I, the only thing I know about Winston is that shit post on Tumblr of like, Overwatch has figured out what the meta should be for sh first person shooters. Because if you play a sniper character, um, a gorilla jumps 40 feet through the air and beats you to death. That's how yeah. all games with snipers <laughs> should be. They should always, the counters of snipers should always be gorilla. I just want to give a shout out to the uh, for. For April Fools, mm -hmm. they gave all the characters uh, like different voice lines. Yeah. But Winston's is just his name, so every time he says anything, he just goes Winston, Winston. Oh, man. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I like Winston. And when I played I watch, I did play Winston because I just like doing the Harambe revenge. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, but no, Gorilla Grodd's superpowers are he is gorilla, so he's like you know got super strength. You know, but he also has psychic powers. He doesn't like to dirty his hands, but when he needs to, he can crack your head open like an anemic walnut when they're like, you know, the situation calls for it. I don't think so. Pity. <laughs> and just like the fact that he's a gorilla but he's also got psychic powers is so funny to me. Because like, because I think he's playable in like Injustice 2, the fighting game. And like, he used like a lot of psychic powers to like attack the opponent. But then one of his other moves is just gorilla. <laughs> and he's just like, he just like body checks you and just like beats you to death. He just slide in. And <laughs> he basically <laughs> does, yeah. <he's... laughs> like he's really good. Like one of his moves, he just he just does like um, the, he just leaps across the screens, just like um, overhead, like gorilla slaps. And you can't do it without it. Like, what do you do when you're getting crossed up by a gorilla? You just you, just, you, you accept it. So what's the deal with a spoon? Because I actually don't remember. Okay, so like the title is like the title of this article and presumably the video will be one of DC's most threatening villains is a brainy in gorilla with a spoon. And DC, in their infinite wisdom, decided that a psychic gorilla who can just as easily crush you with a building you threw with his mind as he would like beat you to death with his meaty gorilla paws wasn't scary enough. So they gave an extra superpower um, that he could like increase his already formidable intellect by eating your brains. However, being like, you know, the hyper-intelligent gorilla that he is, he doesn't want to dirty his hands. So, he comes into battle equipped with, I shit you not, his combat spoon. Which is a giant oversized spoon he uses to crack open people's skulls and then scoop out their brains to eat it. Brains! 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 They decide, like, you know, we're going to make Gorilla Grodd even scarier. It's like you can increase his psychic powers by eating brains, and he eats the brains with a big spoon. And just the idea of, like, imagine, oh, no, we're in Gorilla City, shit gets super real. They don't like people. Oh, I'm sure they're not that bad, bad Gorilla Spoon. 
<laughs> That's definitely more threatening than what my mind went to. Because you know you just randomly think of stuff. Mm -hmm. I just imagined him with a wooden spoon. I don't know why. Like baking. Like he's just baking. The thing is, that's what? scarier. Cause, like, imagine, like, that's the thing, that's going to take a lot longer to kill you with. At least the big battle spoon, you're probably going to die in one hit. That thing is going to take all day. Oh my god. <laughs> battle spoon. What's no? Is it the battle spoon? I need to double check. It's either the battle spoon or... No, sorry, it's called the combat spoon. It's called his combat spoon, and it's just a spoon that's really big. Maybe you're like, you know, it could have been a wooden spoon, and he just kills you with kindness because he's just baking you a cake, but it's filled with poison. No, he beats you to death. He just, he straight up beats you to death. <laughs> well, just <laughs> ruined Nisha's image. And then he keeps yeah. brains in jars and shotguns well, and like. Not um, uh, much better. He's still killing someone. <laughs> Just a lot slower. I like how you also you were like, he kills them with kindness, with poison cake. Well, kindness is in like, oh, I made you a cake, oh, it says I'm your friend. And yeah, then... But it's not the kindness that kills them, it's the poison. Yeah. Also the brain it's, it's eating. Poison. <laughs> like, he just downs the brain. It's like the picture I've got in front of me is him just downing a brain in a pint glass. And it's like, oh, Gorilla Grod, you're so gorilla. Oh. Perfect, right, so. Yeah, 20 minutes, sir. You're so gorilla. So, so my love of gorillas is well known, because I just think they're just such hilarious animals, but I asked Brad for his favourite gorilla. Nisha, do you have a favourite gorilla moment in media? <laughs> that you're not seeing the rise of the planet of the apes? It's like, I love that gorilla moment. Um... He tackles a helicopter. Well, like, I, I, know, I know you love this, because I've had to find that clip about a dozen times for videos in the past. It's because, imagine, like you're in a helicopter, you think, well, I'm so, like, the last thing you expect when you're in a helicopter is to be attacked by a gorilla, and then it happens. It but happens! <laughs> I don't know, because like, I don't watch a lot of media with gorillas in. Only TikToks. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of TikToks with gorillas. Okay, what's your favourite TikTok with a gorilla in it? I'll put that clip it's in. It's annoying because I like the slidey gorilla. But that slidey gorilla's like... great. Or, or that spinning one. Just a bit you ever seen the spinning one? one? Well, it's like in a pool of water and it's spinning. No! Then they edit it to go faster and faster and faster. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've seen loads, but I can't think of any others apart from the slidey one because I've seen the slidey one at least ten times. Oh, it's great. I but, remember like there's a video on my channel of uh, when I was playing like Smash Bros with a mate of mine. I just captured it my deepest nut yet because I uh, call like Donkey Kong side B the nut because he just slams like the headbutt on you. And I was like below the fucking stage and I had a side B, so I put the clipping. So I was really proud of how good that was, which was the title my deepest nut yet. It's like there we go. Gorillas, but I've seen like TikToks where monkeys are like peeling bananas and the banana just falls and the monkey looks just like really sad. Like, <laughs> I like that one of like the gorilla dad with its kid watching a like a, a caterpillar oh. and it's just sat on the floor and it's like, oh, chase cute. that. And it's just a little caterpillar and the gorilla's like, oh. just flicking the caterpillar. What's he doing? Well, you see there's like videos of uh, parents who take their kids to the zoo and oh, yeah. the gorillas and the gorillas come over like, Wants to like cuddle the baby, like yeah. it's its own. It's like, oh, that's really cute. All those ones where people try and like beat the chest and the gorilla smashes the glass. It's oh, like, do cute. not challenge the, the not gorilla. <laughs> that is not cute. That's quite scary. <laughs> Don't challenge the gorilla. Why would you challenge it? So, you've seen that video? I think he got, right, it was an actual scientific experiment, but he like got reposted. It was like, oh, someone put a mirror in the most like hood part of the jungle. And it's just all the highlights, all the animals squaring up to their own <laughs> reflection. <laughs> It was like Luna was doing that last night because we had uh, a TV, like the broken TV, someone was coming to collect it, so we yeah. had it near the door and I just, she was making noise and I was like, what is she doing? And she just had the thriller stamps and a bushy oh, tail because yeah. she could see her reflection in this TV and she just go back and forth like, thriller. We've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> I told the story once about my mate who squirted his own reflection. <laughs> like he tried to fight his own reflection and the bouncer saw it and went, you're not getting back in. I went, why not? He just tried to fight his own reflection. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> it's like 11 o'clock at night and he's already fucking, he's, he's done, he's gone. He's the worst. But no, I'm going to put lots of clips of gorillas in. I'm so happy I get to edit this one. Perfect. <laughs>